Okay, let's talk about how to actually start building a screen, your first screen now that we have the assets in place. We've got some tiles um, and we've got a path and I'm gonna show you the basic process over here in the maze game and then, or the, the top-down sort of adventure game and then I'll jump over to a more complete uh, tile set so you can see how I might use some of these things over here in the platform game. So let's, uh, let's go to my overworld map and I already picked the screen. I just made sure I was in bank one and double clicked on a screen and now that I'm in a screen, if I want to start laying in graphics, I need to do a little bit of thought as to where I'm going to place a HUD. Like maybe I'll put it here, or maybe I'll put it down here, or maybe I'll put it over here. I'm not sure. I'm going to mark it with these spikes for now. So let's just say I'm going to put a top HUD up here. So it's going to go down to there, and the rest of the screen is what I'm actually going to use. Um, so pretend there's a HUD right here, and we haven't gotten a HUD yet, or, or you know, heads-up display yet, and we're going to talk about that soon um, but just kind of imagine a rectangle here that um, is not going to be seen uh, it's going to be covered up by a heads-up display I can just grab a tile that I want and left click to place it and what's nice about it is it places the graphics and it places the, the collision data so if I look up here I can actually put my mouse over and see that these are all solid and it places the right attributes which was this second sub palette right here whereas if I take this and I place it you can see if I put my mouse over it, it loads up the player death and it uses the first attributes and it uses that tile. So I can use these just to place assets. Now, um, that's going to be the basically the top of my screen because this whole area right here I'd make into my HUD. And now that I've got that, I can erase this. There is no erase. However, if I um, if you see a ghosted image like this, that, that shows you what you can place if you click the mouse. If I hit escape, the ghosted image goes away. Now I have nothing selected. If I go to a tile that I want to erase and I hit 5, the 5 key, it doesn't literally erase it, but what it does is it paints it with the first tile, um, tile 0. And tile 0 is grass and it's also walkable. So it's just it's it's about the same in this tile set at least as, as erasing something. Um, so you can think about it like that. Uh, fi the five key will erase whatever's under your mouse. So, you know, this is basically going to be where my HUD lives. And I'll go ahead and make a little top-down adventure game screen. Now, let's pretend it's easy to, to put graphics off the screen to the bottom or to the right. However, it's harder at the top or to the left because I can't move. I can't get to the left any further however if I hit shift you can see what it does it actually grabs the other the other side of the tile as a handle and then I can get over there and if I hit uh, control it grabs the bottom so I could like put it up here if I wanted to um, but that's that's pretty good that's a that's a neat looking little screen I can grab some spikes and you know put them along the edge here something like this like that and then I could um, put my player in. I'm going to hit escape and I can right click and place my player. And this is where now I've just set the screen and the location where my player would start this game. And I haven't made my player anything yet, but um, that's where he would start. The other thing I can do is I can go to screen info. And a lot of this stuff is not used or is not used the way you might think, but path group absolutely is. And I did make a path group out of grassland tiles. So now that I've got, and it's a really crappy path but my paths are loaded under the one key, the two key, the three key, and the four key. So if I look at my paths, this is my one key, this is my two key, this is my three key, this is my four key. Right now, these would be nothing. They would show nothing at all, but this would show this really crappy brown path here. So if I go to overworld and I hold down the one key and I start drawing, it auto populates based on the what's around it so I can make this little dirt path and show that I want the player to go this way or maybe this way and I can hit a five if I need to delete some of that and I can make start to make this a little bit vi more visually interesting now like this so he's got options and maybe he can you know choose to go here or maybe this is spikes so I can make this look a little bit more interesting and play a little bit more interesting. Um, now this is a really bad path. Let's take a look at it over here in the platform game. And let's go to another screen on the overworld over here. Uh, let's just choose this screen right here. Okay. So right now it auto loaded tile set zero. It auto loaded screen specific zero. And it auto loaded the grassland uh, tiles. 
And you can see what happens here is I've got the uh, I've got the, the the main tiles here, all the way down to here, and then I get I have screen specific tiles for the rest. Let me show you. If I go into assets, this is my tile set. This is my screen specific tile set. So spikes, a door, this block, the ladder, the this little up block, the lock block, and this sort of lock door. These are all screen specific, and they use screen tile screen zero zero. So if I look at that screen again, I can see I've got the spikes, the door, that that circle block, the ladder, the up block, the lock door. Okay. If I change my main tiles, all my main tiles are different. This is the underground, the dungeon tiles right here, but I still have my screen tile set to the same, so they still show up. So uh, this is sort of what I was trying to show you before and how you can start combining tiles um, with you know main tile sets and screen specific tile sets and why that's super helpful. So I might want spikes on this screen and I also might want spikes on you know, uh, one of my, my underground screens, uh, and that, so they'd be a good, they'd be a good choice to put in your screen specific tiles, uh, to start making a screen, uh, again, I can just start putting in tiles like this, and it's putting in the collision data and it's putting in the, um, attri attribute data, which is the color data and it's putting in the tile data and a uh, quick trick if I wanted to copy an area and paste it, I can hit escape. So I've got that ghost, that ghosted image goes away. Find the tile that I want to copy and hold down the, the shift key and then click and drag. And you'll see this white rectangle appear. Once that white rectangle appears, I can hit control C. And when it goes away, I know I've got it copied into my clipboard. And then I can hit control V and it pastes all that data into the right place. It, it pastes the, the collision data, the tile data, and the attribute data, wherever your mouse is, whatever tile your mouse is over. So I've got this nice little area right here. Um, and I want to show you some different ways that you can use pathing. I'm going to make this tree over here. And I, the, if I look at the paths for this screen, um, I've got this treetop path and I've got this cloud path. And the treetop uses this sub palette and the cloud uses this sub palette. And so the tree is treetop is solid and the clouds are walkable. So the clouds are in the background while the treetop is in the foreground. Um, I go to screen info, I load up the path group and I can put in a modular treetop sort of whatever I want this to look like I can make and then I could use the one key to make a bunch of clouds at different shapes and sizes like that so that that's a really cool way to get diversity out of my screen um, and again if I want to use some screen specific tiles like I want to use this door and around that door brick wall and then on top of that brick wall a roof of some kind I can do that and I could even you know make uh, ladders that go down into the ground below like this so you can start to see how I construct construct a screen and how underneath all this stuff in the collision data updates and, and all that stuff um, so that's a quick look at how to easily uh, use this screen painter to paint screens now a couple things to keep in mind this paints the values that are over here. If I were to, let's say, come over here to tree, which I decide, you know what? I don't want this to be a background feature anymore. I want this to be solid. You can't interact with this. It's a blockade. Okay, if I make this solid, I can do that. And I can update this tile. And now if I, if I look at it, sure enough, it's solid. However, if I go to my screen and I put my mouse over, I notice it's still walkable. It, I didn't repaint the values just because I changed it over here. That's as if I mixed a new paint. I still have to paint it onto the canvas in order for it to work. But now if I put the tree there and I, and I move my mouse over, you can see now it says solid. So this new asset is a solid asset. It just wasn't when I originally built it. Um, so. Um, when I originally painted it. So I'm gonna make put this back to walkable and I'm gonna come back over here and I'm gonna use that like 
this and make sure all these are walkable. Okay, good. So that's how I can construct a screen and hopefully that shows you a lot uh, about the different types of tiles and how you might be able to make use of them, how you can re refine this path to make it look a lot better um, and how paths are not limited to only use in a top-down game, but they're super helpful in even in a platform game, which you wouldn't think they would be. Um, yeah. So next we're going to start looking at like planning a HUD and, and where to put it and how to start building that.